Hi Gemma, how are you? Hi Irene. So Gemma Keough, um, nutritional therapist from Waterford. Thank you very much for doing our nutrition talk here with the Helping People with Parkinson's course. It was fantastic, thank you. My pleasure. If Gemma, you could tell us how important uh, food and nutrients are in relation to dealing with people with Parkinson's. Um, vital is all I can say, Erin, because really nutrients that you take in from your food and, and, and the interplay of those nutrients are actually the building blocks for what your body then, then does. So mm -hmm. they make the building blocks for all the biochemical reactions that happen in the body and they're used as literally like the bricks and water of all the cells. So how well nourished you are can actually have, uh, and, and there are studies to, to support this, how well nourished you are can actually almost determine the trajectory and, and, and your health outcome if you've been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. And it can reflect how quickly or slowly your disease will progress. Yeah, yeah. And could you give us some maybe top tips on food to avoid? and then best to take so okay yeah so foods to avoid um huge amount of research showing that you know fast releasing carbohydrates so sugary foods really sugary drinks um too much bread pasta potatoes crackers biscuits any of those kind of fast releasing carbohydrates can spike blood sugar levels and there's a lot of research now around the fact that some of these kind of brain disorders such as Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson's disease are actually being coined type 3 diabetes. So they mm -hmm. know for sure that insulin um, and excessively high blood sugar levels over a period of time play a role in these disorders. So that's probably most important to avoid. Also, um, a very high intake of glutinous foods, like what I mentioned, they're really cereals, breads, too much pasta, too many... Um, you know, like biscuits, anything that's a, it's very he a very heavy wheat-based diet is very high in gluten. And we know that gluten can actually cause the gut to become that little bit leaky. And leaky gut seems to play a role in the development of lots of different autoimmune conditions, but also mm -hmm. Parkinson's disease as well. So they would definitely be ones to kind of watch your intake of. Yeah. And what would be the best foods to have? What would you encourage people to have? So... Not new advice, you've heard mm -hmm. all this before, mm -hmm. but plenty of brightly coloured fruits and vegetables. It's not enough to just be eating potatoes and some, you know, white onions and an apple here and there. You think, think the rainbow, so think about that spectrum of colour. So every day you want to be eating something that's red, like strawberries in season now at the moment, for example. Um, you want something orange, you want something green, uh, you want something blue-black, and then you want something yellow. So when you are doing your grocery shop, think of the amount of color that is going into your trolley or your basket every week. That's what's mm -hmm. really important. So plenty of brightly colored fruits and vegetables. They've been shown to halt the progression of the, the damage that can happen to the cells that are no longer making the dopamine. Um, so plenty of color. The other thing that I would say is really do take care of your gut health, okay? Mm -hmm. In relation to leaky gut, as we just mentioned, but also um, the microbes in our gut, they play a huge role in kind of, uh, I suppose, communicating to the rest of the body what to do. So the more live and fermented foods you can eat, the better. So that would be things like live yogurt, uh, that might be sauerkraut if you like it, which is like pickled cabbage, but uh, kefir, anything like that that is living, okay? It, that's an inoculation of good gut bugs for your for your tummy, and um, has a huge knock on to just maintaining you know kind of a good digestive tract. But actually, there's a huge mind gut connection. So the healthier your gut is, typically the healthier the brain is. Absolutely, that's very good advice. And in relation to what I know, like we do have a lot of. Um, European followers, a lot of American and Australian followers, but for our Irish people, which I, I did found, find this very interesting today, we are hearing that, you know, milk is so bad for you, and I'm, I love milk, and, you know, it was all like thinking, oh, I have to move to almond milk and soya milk, but I was very delighted to hear that our milk is good milk. Yeah, Irish milk, I, I would debate with with many people that Irish milk is, uh, you know, any any Irish dairy and Irish beef is probably some of the best in the world because of the farming practices we have. And because of our poor damp wet climate, we have lots of lovely green grass for our cows to feed on pretty much year round, depending on how bad the winter gets. So obviously the last winter we had here was very extreme weather conditions. 
um, and, and you know, food is at an absolute low. So that might influence the quality of the milk. But generally speaking, milk and milk products made from grass-fed animals, which is what we mainly mm -hmm. have in Ireland, are superior. They're a very good source of omega-3 fatty acids, very nutrient-rich as well. So actually got a high composition of, a uh, high content of um, vitamins and minerals, namely vitamin A, vitamin D, and minerals like calcium, zinc, for example. Um, and a lot of dairy products like cheese and yogurt actually bring an awful lot in terms of nutrient value to the diet. Now, however, that said, there are studies linking dairy consumption with an increased uh, susceptibility to Parkinson's disease. But again, when you look at these studies, they weren't studies conducted on our Irish soils. So they weren't using mm -hmm. Irish dairy. I actually don't know what the source of those studies um, what, what, what the source of the dairy was in those studies. So if, if you happen to come across that in your reading, that's probably why, that's probably why yeah. it's it. Um, so my advice wouldn't be to suddenly start taking lots of nut milks or plant milks. The nutrient profile of them actually isn't terribly good. Fine, if you are dairy intolerant and you find you get a lot of problems, you know, obviously I'm not telling you to continue to eat something that you know really doesn't suit you. Mm -hmm. um, but if, if you feel that you take cheese and yogurt and when you take them, you feel absolutely fine, please, by all means, keep them in the diet. They're very, very nutrient-rich. Excellent. And um, you mentioned as well apple cider vinegar. Mm. That, how does that help people with Parkinson's? So it's a fermented food, number one. So it's a really good source of living bugs for your tummy to keep your tummy behaving properly. Um, it's a really good digestive tonic, so it actually creates the right environment in your stomach for you to break down your food thoroughly and absorb those key nutrients as well. Minerals can be difficult to kind of break away from the food that you're eating. Not difficult, but if your digestive tract is struggling, you know, or you've any kind of digestive discomfort, that can be a little bit more challenging. Apple cider vinegar can help that. Now, it needs to be a live apple cider vinegar, so an unfiltered, unpasteurized one. And the more of that kind of layer of sediment, the thicker that is at the bottom, the better. So a little bit of, of that on a daily basis, but please make sure that you dilute it. It must be taken mm -hmm. in about 50 to 100 mils of water um, because it is an acid and it can actually over time burn the lining of your esophagus, which is never good. Mm -hmm. So take it in about 50 to 100 mils of water. Start out slowly with a teaspoon a day. Um, if you tolerate that fine, then maybe increase it to two teaspoons, you know, once or twice a day until you're taking maximum one tablespoon in the morning and maximum one tablespoon in the evening. You never take more than two tablespoons per day. Great, great. And I know you gave us a whole list of foods that um, were excellent for Parkinson's and uh, liver was one. Why is liver so good? So liver is very rich in a substance called choline. Choline is a nutrient that helps protect nerve cells from damage. Um, it's very well studied also in the prevention and, and halt in the progression of Alzheimer's disease. So a lot of neurological conditions benefit from uh, vitamin A and vitamin D rich foods, which liver is. It's also brimming with iron and B vitamins for energy, which obviously we know um, people from Parkins with Parkinson's disease can suffer from quite a lot of is low energy and, and the fatigue levels seem mm -hmm. to increase over time. So liver is just one of the most ancient foods that is very, very nutrient rich to include in your diet. If you can, a teaspoon to twice a week. Excellent. And there's so much more. So just one last question. I know people can contact you themselves. Um, where can people contact you? So my website is GemmaKehoeNutrition.com. Uh, I also have a Facebook group called Wellness Warriors. If anyone would like to join that, they're more than welcome. Perfect. And one last question for you, Gemma, which I was really kind of shocked at when I started doing the groups and so many people just don't realise, they didn't realise the importance of medication and mm -hmm. taking it on time and taking it properly. Can you tell us the importance of taking your medication on time? So one of the typical medications taken um, in the management of Parkinson's disease is called levodopa. And levodopa, con uh, it kind of competes with protein for absorption. So, for example, if you take your levodopa medication, at the same time you have your main meal, and your main meal maybe is like chicken, potatoes, and some vegetables, you won't be getting the maximum benefit from that levodopa because the protein from your chicken is going to compete with the levodopa for absorption into your system. So it's really important that you take your levodopa at least 30 minutes before your meal, or at least one after uh, sorry, one hour after your main mm -hmm. meal to get the maximum benefit from it because the efficacy of your medication will be reduced if you're taking it with a protein-rich food. 
Excellent. Thank you very much. So thank you again, Gemma, for doing this. I really appreciate it. Thank and you. again, people can contact you directly. And if there is people, say, in America or in Europe or someone that have Parkinson's and they want to do an online consultation with mm -hmm. you, no can problem. you do that? They can yeah, just contact you. Yeah, more and more now. Yeah, yeah. It works yeah. really well. So mm -hmm. we can do FaceTime or Skype consultations, no problem. That's great. Thank you so much, Gemma. Thanks, Bye.